Hello, my name is Shahryar Shahryari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory combinatorics based on my book, An Invitation to Combinatorics. The topic of this lecture is examples from combinatorics for partially ordered sets. I have another video introducing partially ordered sets and giving more general examples, but this one will be focused on combinatorics. So what's the definition of partially ordered set? If P is a set, and if you have a relation on elements of P, a relation means that if two elements walk through the door, I will be able to say if one of them is related to the other or the other to the first or not. Either. If you have such a relation, it's called a partial order. If for elements of that set, we have X is related to X, that's the reflexive property. If X is related to Y and Y is related to Z, then X is related to Z, that's called transitive property. And if X is related to Y and Y is related to X, then the only way that can happen is that X equals Y, and that's called the anti-symmetric property. If you have a partial order, we usually use the less than or equal to symbol. When we use less than or equal to, this does not mean we are talking about numbers. From grade school, you're used to less than or equal to mean to say this number is less than or equal to that number. This is not what this means here. We have generalized the definition of less than or equal to from now on. As long as I give you a relation that is a partial order, then I'm allowed. I'm giving myself the license to use this symbol. So the symbol now has become ambiguous. This is one of the things we do in math. As you go further, things you thought you knew might have new meanings. So less than or equal to does not mean that you're comparing two numbers. It just means that you are in some poset and less than or equal to is the relation. A set that has a partial order is called a partially ordered set or a poset for short. Now, if every two elements of the partially ordered set are actually comparable, meaning that if you pick two elements, either X is less than or equal to Y or Y less than or equal to X, then you actually have a total order. And the prototypical example is the Boolean lattices. If you have a set with n elements, bracket n stands for one true n, and that's our stand-in for a set with n elements, then two to the bracket n is the set of subsets of bracket n, and inclusion is a relation, and two to the n with that relation is a poset called the Boolean lattice of order n. It's a poset because every subset is a subset of itself, if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C, then A is a subset of C. And if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, then A and B are actually equal to each other. If you have a poset and you have two elements, then it's possible that X is less than or equal to Y or Y less than or equal to X, but it's possible that you have neither one of those. If X is less than or equal to Y or Y is less than or equal to X, then you say that X and Y are comparable. You can compare them. If not, you say they're incomparable. Now, in the Boolean lattice, for example, 1, 2, and 1, 3 are incomparable. Neither one is a subset of the other, whereas 2 and 1, 2, 4 are comparable because 2 is a subset of 1, 2, 4. If x is less than or equal to y, but you know that they're not the same, we write x is less than y. If x is less than y and there's no z between them, there's no z that's greater than x and less than y, then we say that y covers x our x is covered by y. In the Boolean lattice of order 5, 1, 3, 5 covers 1, 5 because 1, 5 is a subset of 1, 3, 5 and there's no subset between them. But 1, 3, 5 does not cover 3 because even though 3 is a subset of 1, 3, 5, 1, 3 is a subset between them. 1, 3 as well as 3, 5 are subsets that contain 3 in 1, 3, 5. There's a visual way of thinking about posets that's often useful and that's drawing their Hasse diagram. If you have a poset P, then the Hasse diagram is a graph where the vertices are the elements of P. And if two elements are in your poset X and Y, then you put an edge between X and Y if and only if Y covers X. Usually, if X is less than Y, then X is drawn lower than Y. So for example, this could be the Hasse diagram of a poset, and you would know that you have seven elements and all the relations here, even though we have only drawn the cover relations. The Hasse diagram of the Boolean lattice of order three, the first one has the labels, tells us what the elements are. The second one just focuses on the relations, and we see that we are really just getting a three-dimensional cube. This is the Hasse diagram of the Boolean lattice of order six, subsets of one through six ordered by inclusion. I've not put the curly brackets and the commas when I'm writing a set. One to six here means the set containing one, two, and six. This is the Hasse diagram of the integers ordered by less than or equal to. This is the poset that you are used to using less than or equal to for. This is divisors of an integer ordered by divisibility. So the elements of these posets are divisors of 24. So 24, 12, 8, 6, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And something is less than or equal to something if it divides it. 
In combinatorics, there's lots of things we do that we can now think of them in terms of post sets. For example, partitions of a finite set. If you take a set one through n and you take a and b are two partitions, so a and b are not subsets of n, each one of them is a partition of n. And I'm going to tell you what I mean by one partition is less than or equal to another. We say that a is less than or equal to b if every part of a is a subset of one of the parts of b. This relation is called refinement. So here's an example. For if n is 4, then one way to partition 1 through 4 is to say 1 in one set and 2, 3, 4 in another. That's a partition of 4. And I'm going to write that as 1 slash 2, 3, 4. So 1 slash 2, 3, 4 means that I took the set 1, 2, 3, 4 and split it into two parts. One part has just one element 1, the other part has three elements, 2, 3, 4. Now, 1, 2, 4, 3 is another. This time I have three parts, and I write that as 1 slash 2, 4 slash 3. One part has just one in it, one part has two elements, 2 and 4, and the other one has an element 3. And in the refinement order, this second one, 1 slash 2, 4 slash 3, is less than the former one, because every part of this guy is a subset of one of those parts. So 1 is a subset of 1, 2, 4 is a subset of 2, 3, 4, 3 is a subset of 2, 3, 4 as well. Now, on the other hand, 1, 3, 2, 4, that's one partition of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4 is another partition, and those are incomparable. Neither one of them is a refinement of the other. You can't start with one of them and split things further and get the other. So, so here are all the partitions of 1, 2, 3, 4 ordered by refinement. At the bottom, I have the very fine partition that has one alone, two alone, three alone, four alone. At top, I also have the partition of one, two, three, four in one part, just putting them all together. In the second row, I have partitions of one, two, three, four in three parts. In the third row from the bottom, I have partitions into two parts. The number of partitions, for example, in three parts is counted by a Stirling number of the second kind. Watch my videos of Stirling numbers if you don't know what I'm talking about. When we thought about Stirling numbers, we were thinking about numbers that were counting partitions into a certain number of parts. But now thinking of them as a post set, we have this structure that's related to those Stirling numbers. So now I'm going to tell you an example of partitions of an integer. So if you have n and k non-negative integers, a partition of the integer n, not a set n, but the integer n with k parts, is a sequence of k integers that are positive integers such that they add up to n and because order doesn't matter for us we picked one particular order and that's a weakly decreasing one so we start with the biggest one and we go down with of course ties allowed so that's a partition of n these integers are called the parts of the partition i have two videos on partitions of integers if you're more interested now if n is a positive integer and lambda and mu are both partitions of n. So n is something like 10. Lambda is one way of partitioning 10. So it might be 8 comma 2. And mu is another one, maybe 7, 1, 1, 1. Both of these are partitions. They both add up to n. Then we say that lambda is less than or equal to mu if the partial sums of lambda are always less than or equal to the corresponding partial sums of mu. That means that lambda is less than or equal to mu if lambda 1 is less than or equal to mu 1. The lambda 1 plus lambda 2 is less than or equal to mu 1 plus mu 2. Lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda 3 is less than or equal to mu 1 plus mu 2 plus mu 3 and so forth. If you think of these as scores, let's say, in a baseball game, and, and these are the runs that, that appear in each inning, then lambda is less than or equal to mu if lambda never catches up with mu. If you look at the total score, that lambda is always at best ties mu, but never gets ahead. This relation is called dominance. And here's all partitions of the integer 6 into any number of parts ordered by dominance. So 5, 1 is less than or equal to 6. 3, 1, 1, 1 is less than or equal to 3, 2, 1. But 3, 1, 1, 1 and 2, 2, 2 are incomparable. Finally, I want to give you an example from graph theory. If you have a simple graph, a subset of vertices is called independent set if no two vertices in that subset are adjacent, meaning there's no edges between any two elements of S. Now, if you take the independent set of vertices in a graph and order them by inclusion, then you get a post set. So, for example, here's a graph with five vertices. And if you look at their independent sets, there are things like what? Like one and four forms an independent set because one and four are two vertices of this graph. 
and there's not an edge between them. One, three, five is another one. If you write all of them, this is the post set that you will get. So you'll get one, three, five, and all of its subsets, but I also get one, four, and two, five, and this is the post set that you will get. This is the end of this lecture. Keep hydrated at all times. Like my videos and subscribe to my channel if you want to be subjected in your feed with more videos like this. See you in the next lecture.